Okay, this is a short tutorial to cover molecules that do double and triple bonding. And this this should actually be, uh, this was brought up in the previous tutorial, the honk rule for organic chemistry. It works especially well for um, checking your final structure um, after you've drawn a molecule that has double and triple bonds. Okay, so, and the rule goes... Uh, hydrogen is supposed to have one dash, oxygen has two, nitrogen has three, carbon has four. So let's take a look. Also, a um, a good example to use is actually, or another thing to look at, and everyone should have this, um, are these bonding formations. So you'll see that carbon can look like one of these four things. Okay, so you'll see that carbon um, can have four singles, a double and two singles, two doubles, or a triple and a single. So uh, on your final structure, if carbon has something other than one of these, like it's only making three dashes, um, then something's probably wrong. Um, nitrogen is going to have three dashes, and it does a, a three singles, a double and a single, or a, or a triple bond. And then just be aware of oxygen. It can have two singles or a double. Okay, and then this is the honk rule. So one for H, two dashes for O. Uh, nitrogen makes three, one of these formations, but they all have three dashes. And carbon will do one of these formations, and each one has four single dashes. Okay, so let's go, let's go look at some examples. Um, okay, so here's some examples to try. So it says write the Lewis structure for ethene. Um, all right, so in our molecule here, we see that we have two carbons and four hydrogens. So if we tried to go like, if we tried to go something like this, and put three hydrogens here, um, our next carbon would have, okay, so let's say we did something like this. Um, we only have one hydrogen left over, and then this carbon is going to have two open dots like that, and you can't have that, so this carbon right here is only making two dashes, so something's wrong here. Um, here's kind of like a, a longer way to do this. If In general, here's kind of a rule of thumb. Okay, if you see, uh, if you uh, anticipate there being double a double bond or triple bond, then uh, connect the two carbons, the two or more carbons first, um, and then see how the other elements, the other atoms are going to attach. So if we have two carbons, I'll, I'll do this kind of like the, the, the long way. So I'll draw out all the dot diagrams first. Okay, and then now we have four. So it's kind of like this puzzle we have to try to solve. So we have, we have four hydrogens. Um, the only way this is going to work, so if we connect there, well, I actually showed that already. Um, here's kind of like the only way this will work to get everything connected is these two will connect and it will make a double bond. Plus we know because our title here, it says these are going to do double and triple. And then this one and this one will combine. And then these two, this one, and then this one will combine. So our structure will end up looking like this. It's going to go a double like that. And then these will have these two dots left over each to fit, to fit um, these four hydrogens. Okay, so these will go here and here, like that. Okay, and if we go back to, if, if we go back to uh, this earlier slide, If we go back to this slide here, um, we see that our carbon on that structure, each carbon, it looks like this one. 
both carbons are doing a single and a double. So let's go back to our example. And you see that this carbon here is doing a, a double and two singles. And then this carbon is also doing a double. It's sharing that double and it's doing two singles. So for a total of four. And so here's where the honk rule is useful. It's for double checking. So both hi all hydrogens in this picture are making one dash and both carbons are making four. So this one so this carbon is doing four dashes, and then this carbon right here is also doing four. That's primarily what the honk rule is used for. It's to help guide you so that you're not making carbon with like three dashes or anything like that. Okay, so let's try a couple more examples. So here's, write the Lewis structure for, um, so this is ethene, the first one. This one's ethine, the next one. So... Um, similar to the previous example, we're going to, let's take our, our, this has two carbons, and we have two hydrogens, so it's kind of like this puzzle, how do we get it to match the honk rule? Um, both, both carbons, so these carbons, they're going to make a triple bond right here, and then you have this dot to attach one H, we'll go there. And then this dot will attach the other H. So it ends up looking like this. So we make a triple. And then the two H's connect on the ends, on each end. This is the only way that this will work so that it matches the honk rule. And you might have noticed if you compare it to the bonding formation handout, um, this carbon, so this carbon is making a triple and a single. And then this carbon is making also making a triple and a single. And then both hydrogens are making a single. So it follows, it matches the honk rule. Okay, so here's another example. Let's see if you can let's see if you can do this one. If you guys can do this one. So this could be a good one to check. Um if you see the the way it's written, it usually almost always gives a suggestion, it gives you a clue as to how it's attached. So I'll give you one hint here. Um, start off by attaching this carbon and this carbon. So attach both carbons. And you could easily you could easily double check this. I'll give you another hint. You could double check your final answer. Make sure you try it first. Okay, so don't no cheating on this. But if you Google uh this structural, you could check your own work, structural formula for this molecule is acetic acid, acetic acid. Okay, you guys might know, yeah, this, so this portion right here is acetate, and then the H, it goes on the N. So draw the Lewis structure, and those are my two hints. Well, this one kind of tells you the answer, but anyway. Let's see what you guys come up with. Okay, so um, here's another uh, pre like precursor before we go into uh, polarity of like large molecules. So what is a large organic molecule? It's stuff with like multiple carbons attached together, and then they have like varying different what are called functional groups on the outside. So let's look at um, how to uh, come up with a uh, Lewis structure. All right, uh, or how to analyze a uh, a Lewis structure of a large organic molecule. So this is one thing that used to confuse me in, uh, when I was in college is um, all the different ways to write the same exact molecule. There's all these different ways, and they all have their different uses. So that's why there's different ways to uh, describe or show a picture of a molecule. So <clears throat> anytime you see two intersecting lines, imagine a carbon being there. So this is what's called a skeleton structure. Like if you have like some medicine, let's say you got prescribed some medicine, like an antibiotic from the doctor, and you open up this little pamphlet that it comes with, and you'll see like this crazy, like this giant molecule. So what are you looking at exactly? You're looking at what's called a, a skeleton structure. And I don't know if that's like an official name. It might be just something I came up with, but it's called a skeleton structure. 
And anytime you see two intersecting lines, imagine a carbon being there. So for example, this, this right here, actually means this. Okay, so there's carbons on the end, on these ends right here, and where it intersects at that point right there. Okay, so now, what is, so what is this molecule? You can't just connect three carbons and call it a molecule. That doesn't follow the honk rule. So on skeleton structures, they don't show hydrogens ever. Um, well, actually, sometimes, if it's connected to like an oxygen. But if it's the C to H bond, they don't show. So um, you use the honk rule to figure out how many hydrogens are attached. All carbons form four bonds. So if you don't see them, hydrogen atoms are implied. So what does that mean? On this, so use the honk rule to tell H's. So what it means is on this carbon here, we see only one dash. Carbon is supposed to make four. So that means this carbon has three hydrogens attached to it that are not shown. Okay, this carbon, it's making two dashes, one here and one here. So, and carbon is supposed to make four. So that means two H's are not shown. Okay, so that means this carbon here has two H's on it. And then this carbon is like the first one we looked at. The, we see only one dash, the C to C bond. And so there must be three H's also on this carbon. So this molecule is propane. This is the same as this. Okay, and if we write this in what's called a, so this is a skeleton structure. This is a structural formula. And the last thing here is a condensed molecular formula. So these, all three of these molecules are exactly the same thing, just different ways to represent it. This one is useful for shorthand and being quick. This one shows all the attachments. And then this one is useful if you're going to write a balanced reaction or something like that. So this one here is called a molecular formula. And you might be even see it called a condensed molecular formula. Okay, so let's practice on a, on a molecule, um, practice this concept, a skeleton structure. Okay, so here's a, uh, a, uh, um, a, what are these class of molecules? Uh, hormones, so testosterone. Okay, um, okay, so let's, let's write the, let, I want to go from this, oops, so I want to go from this giant molecule, and I don't want to write the whole thing. I want to write its condensed molecular formula. So I want to make it say this. Um, so we have, so we're going to have to try to count all the C's, H's, and O's, and then we could condense it and write a molecular formula. So first of all, um, I like to uh, take your pencil, and then um, anywhere you see an intersection or an open point, these, by the way, are these cone-type shapes right here, are trying to show three dimensions. It's just really just a stick. It's just a line. Okay, it's trying to show that this is coming out of the screen, like towards you. <clears throat> so take your pencil, and then I like to fill in the, the, the points here with C's. So there's a C, there's a C there, a C there, there's one here. Um, maybe red is a better color. Okay, so there's there's a C here, here, here. And I like to count as I go along. So it's three, four, five, six, seven. There's one there. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19. Some students get confused. They think that there's a carbon there. What this is showing is this is just a C to O bond. There is no carbon there. Okay, so I forgot how many I counted. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so there are 19 carbons in this formula. Now for the hydrogens. So on this carbon, we see two dashes, one and two. So that means there's two H's there. On this carbon, here's an interesting one. There are actually four dashes shown. There's two singles and there's a double on this O. So this one, there are no hydrogens here because it's already making all four dashes. 
Okay, this carbon, there's a double right here and here and a single, so there must be one H here. On this carbon is actually similar to this one. There's a double and two singles, so there are none on that one. This carbon, there's two. This carbon is only showing one dash, so there's three. On this carbon is showing three dashes, so there's one. This one must have two. This one has two. This one has one. This one has one. Here we have two. This one must have two. This one's got three. Um, this one has two, two, and then there's one more right here, so don't forget to count that one. Okay, so that's a lot of hydrogens. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Okay, and then we have two oxygens. Okay, and then you could go into...